the Kraft Foods Company presents Willard Waterman as the Great Gildersleeve. This leave is brought to you, transcribed by the Kraft Foods Company. Kraft, makers of the one and only Miracle Whip, the famous salad dressing that's so good it outsells the next 20 leading brands of salad dressing combined. Why is Miracle Whip so good? A special Kraft recipe, fine ingredients, and expert blending all help make this the wonderful salad dressing it is. The salad dressing that can make your salads more delicious than ever. Get the one and only Miracle Whip salad dressing. It's made by Kraft. Well, it's New Year's Eve, but let's go back an evening and pick up the great Gildersleeve and his nephew Leroy in pursuit of their favorite diversion. Leroy is looking forward to seeing a movie, and his uncle is looking forward to seeing Miss Tuttle. Uncle, you sure you don't want to go to the movie with me instead of going to see your girl? Leroy, don't ask silly questions. You're going to miss a piece. Oh, no, I'm not. (laughs) I don't understand why a guy turns down a swell movie just to sit and hold hands with a girl. We don't hold hands. Then you're silly if you don't go to the movie. (laughs) Okay, okay. Watch it, young man. I don't mind admitting that I'm thinking of becoming seriously interested in Miss Tuttle. Unc. Yes, my boy? I hate to see you wasting your time, so maybe I ought to tell you. Tell me what? A snapshot dropped off Miss Tuttle's desk one day and I picked it up. Guess who it was? Um, Her mother? Not wearing a major's uniform and a mustache. (laughs) Oh, I know about him, Leroy. Yeah? He's a Marine, and they don't give up easy. He doesn't mean anything to Miss Tuttle. She has his picture on her piano, but she never mentions it. Handsome, huh? Well, uniforms and mustaches do some things for some very homely people. <laughs> when are you going to get a uniform? <laughs> Just kidding. Gosh. Well, tonight, tonight, Grace promised to let me know if I could take her out New Year's Eve. If she gives me that date, then I'll know where I stand. Well, good evening, Grace. Hello, Throckmorton. Come in. Thank you. Here, I picked these up at the floor. What lovely roses. Here, let me take your hat. Thank you. I see you still have your mistletoe up. Oh, I let it stay through the holidays. Why'd you hang it on the mantel over the fireplace? It's so decorative. Well, it has other uses, you know. Really? If a man tried to kiss a girl under that mistletoe, he'd catch fire. (laughs) Now, Throckmorton, you just come away from that fireplace. Yeah, all right. I'll sit over here on the piano stool. Excuse me while I put my flowers in some water. Go right ahead. Yeah, I don't know if she likes me or not. How can I go about sewing up that date for New Year's Eve? Oop. Here's that picture of the major. Staring at me over his silly mustache. I'll bet he waxes it. What are you frowning at, Throckmorton? Yo, I see you have some new music here. Glowworm. 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 Hey, Grace, speaking of glowing, how about glowing out with me on New Year's Eve? I suppose you think I've been awful about that day. Well, I've been happy to wait patiently. But, Grace, tonight's the last night. Well, really, Throckmorton, I haven't meant to keep you waiting, but... Well, but... maybe we could talk it over better if there weren't so many people around. But what do you mean? Why don't I turn the Major's picture to the wall? Two's company, but three's a crowd. <laughs> oh, Throckmorton. Yeah, what about it? I'm sure we'll have a wonderful time. You mean I have a date? Mm-hmm. Well... What are you playing? Something for the Major. Goodbye forever. Why, Joe? 
George, I feel great this morning. What a girl. What a date. What a New Year's Eve this is going to be. Well, better clear my desk. Get ready for 1953. It's Grace and me in 53. <laughs> Come in. Hello, Peavy. Oh, hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. <laughs> what are you doing out of the drugstore? Oh, I asked Riley Coop once in a while. I had to come down to City Hall today on a tax matter. Are they checking up on you, Peavy? No, I'm checking up on them. I'm entitled to a refund. <laughs> Make a mistake, did you? No, I paid them too much on purpose. I like to get money back from the city. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Sit down, Peavy, while I clear my desk. From the looks of it, I don't think I can sit that long. It'll only take a minute. I just have to dispose of this unanswered correspondence. Mr. Gildersleeve, can you get by with stuffing it in the waste paper basket? If it's anything important, they'll write me again. Well, I'm anyway, very... I'm too happy about Miss Tuttle. Miss Tuttle? Grace, I should call her, since she calls me Throckmorton. My, my, you're getting on pretty friendly terms. Yep. I've been married 30 years, and I still call Mrs. Peavy Mrs. Peavy. <laughs> well, you never can tell what 1953 will bring. I may be calling Grace Mrs. Gildersleeve. You don't say. Yeah, I can hardly wait until tonight to see her again. You have a date tonight? Yeah. Oh, I was sort of hoping we could ring out the old year together. Oh? Mrs. Peavy's still visiting her mother, and I didn't much care to go home and sing Old Lang Syne with the parrot. <laughs> well, Miss Tuttle and I are stepping out. Sorry, Peavy. Oh, I don't want you to feel sorry for me, Mr. Gildersleeve. I'm glad you don't. So I'll go with you. You will not! I look pretty sharp if I do say so myself. <laughs> Makes a man feel pretty good to wear tails. Even if it's a short tail like a tuxedo. <laughs> Hi, Uncle. Hello, Leroy. Your old uncle's dressing for New Year's Eve. Do I look like I'm ready for the crystal room? King, what are you going to do, wait tables? <laughs> <laughs> Leroy, you know why I'm wearing this tuxedo? What'd you do, buy it? Well, not exactly. Rented it, huh? If you must know, Yes. Boy, get a load of those patent leather shoes. Where'd you rent those? I bought them. Hey, you must have gotten that date with Miss Tuttle. Who did you think would get it? Well, that major. I don't think we'll hear much more about him, my boy. Yeah? Now, let's go downstairs. I'll clear the way for you. There it is! There it is! Is that the water commissioner and his soup and fish? No, it's a big fish getting in the soup. <laughs> He's in love again. Uh-oh. Well. Mr. Gilsley, folks usually fall in love in the spring, and here it is the day of winter. Long's way past spring. If he's going to fall in love at all, it has to be winter. <laughs> <laughs> I bet Miss Tuttle is proud to be stepping out with you in that rig. Well, I'm lucky too, Bertie. Yeah, I took her away from a Marine major. Mr. Gilsey's taking on the Marines, huh? Yeah, I guess that's about the size of it. <laughs> yeah, Bert. <laughs> Unc, I'm proud of you. You're doing all right, aren't you? Well, I'm not one to brag. But Miss Tuttle is obviously interested. And obviously, I'd make a good catch. Oh, brother. I'll get it! Yeah, I'll take it on my way out, Bertie. Yes, sir! Probably somebody wishing us a happy new year. <laughs> Hello? Rock Morton, this is Grace. Oh, yes, Grace. I was just on my way over. Well, I, I don't know how to say this, except to just say it. What? I'm terribly sorry, but I'll have to ask you to change our date tonight. Who? I've had a tentative date for New Year's Eve for a long time. That's why I kept putting you off. The major, huh? He got a last-minute leave, and he's coming all the way from the base, so there's really nothing else I can do. There isn't, huh? I do hope you'll understand. Happy New Year, Throckmorton. Happy New Year. What's the matter, huh? 
Bunk. Right. Something happened between you and Miss Tuttle? Oh, no. Everything's fine. Yeah, I'm on my way now. Well, who was it? Just somebody wishing us a happy New Year. How does a man spend New Year's Eve alone in a rented tuxedo? The Great Gildersleeve will be back in just a minute. "'Twas the night before New Year's, and all through the place, all the people were sad. Not a smile lit a face. The hostess was treating each guest with great care, hoping for laughter and gaiety there. Then, in a flash, she knew what was the matter. The food she was serving just couldn't taste flatter. So out to her kitchen, she ran straight away for the stuff that would make all her guests holler, Yay! Remember, for sandwiches, salads with zip. Don't you forget to serve Miracle Whip. As poetry, that may not be so good, but as advice, it's terrific. Because Miracle Whip salad dressing makes salads and sandwiches taste so much better. Miracle Whip has a lively, teasing flavor folks call just exactly right. And it's a flavor no other salad dressing has, because Miracle Whip is made from a secret craft recipe a recipe that combines the qualities of zesty, old-fashioned boiled dressing and fine, rich mayonnaise. Miracle Whip has just the texture you want, too. Creamy, thick, and smooth as satin because it's blended with special craft beaters. Try this wonderful salad dressing. So many people like Miracle Whip so much, it's become the most popular salad dressing ever created and actually outsells the next 20 leading brands of salad dressing combined. Get Miracle Whip the very next time you shop. Well, let's get back to the great Gildersleeve. Dressed in his rented tuxedo, he was eagerly anticipating New Year's Eve with his new girlfriend, Miss Tuttle. Already, he was hearing the whistles, ratchets, and horns. Then came the sour note. (laughs) Miss Tuttle phoned and canceled the date. Oh, after all my big talk, I can't let Leroy know she called it off. I'll have to keep up the pretense and just wander around the streets until after midnight. It's going to be tough to do in these new shoes. My feet burn already. Hey, looks like Peavy is still open. He wanted me to do something tonight. Right, George, I'll celebrate with Peavy. He'll appreciate me. Nothing like your old pals on New Year's Eve. Hello, Peavy. Well, hello, Mr. Jones, man. What can I do for you? Nothing, Peavy. All dandied up for your date, I see. Well, yes. I bet you were just dying to grab a horn and get noisy. <laughs> Not especially. There's no hurry. Yeah, I'm just about to close up and go home. You're not in any hurry, are you, Peavy? Well, there's nothing to stay here for. At least I can go home and talk to the parrot. But... <laughs> Peavy, I've decided to take you up on your proposition and spend New Year's Eve with you. How's that? We'll celebrate together. Well, Mr. Gildersleeve, you didn't have to wear your tuxedo for me. No, Peavy? I, I'm sorry if your date didn't pan out. Well, I'm not. What do we do, Peavy? Where will we go? Well, I'm not dressed to go out. We could pull the blinds and ice up a Coke. <laughs> Great idea, Peavy. You break out the Cokes and I'll pull the blinds. This is the way to spend New Year's Eve, Peavy. Pour me another coat. Got it right here in the ice bucket. Yeah, Peavy. Women can be a lot of trouble. Well, yeah, that's for you to say. I'm married. <laughs> now you take Miss Tuttle. I thought she was true blue. She phones me at the last minute. You can't count on them. You can count on them to change your mind. 
<laughs> yeah, they hand you one disappointment after another. Peavy, that's been the history of my life. Well, you've had some interesting chapters. I can remember way back when you were in love with the widow Ransom. Yeah, that Leela gave me fits. <laughs> what a woman. Yes, she was. Like I always said, she was the kind of a woman that would make a man burn down his house. <laughs> yeah. It's been about four years since I've seen Leela. Now, that's right. She did come back to town, didn't she? Yeah, I was engaged to Adeline Fairchild at the time. She heard about it and arranged a rendezvous with me at the Palm Room. That's a nice place to rendezvous. I'll never forget. She was waiting behind a potted palm when I walked in. see you behind that potted palm? I heard you coming, so I thought I'd play peekaboo. <laughs> My George, it's good to see you. When I heard you engaged, I just had to see you, too. You know, little old addle-headed me. <laughs> Leela, you're a little devil. You think so, Throckmorton? <laughs> Same old Leela. Say. You're doing your hair different. Oh, well, I was wondering when you were going to say something. And you haven't even looked at my new dress. Well, I didn't think I should, being an engaged man. <laughs> really? Oh, by the way, I haven't congratulated you. Thank you. Leela, I hope you understand. Good gracious, yes. When a girl's best boyfriend becomes engaged to a girl's cousin, who can understand better than that girl? <laughs> Leela, I'm glad you're taking it like this. Throckmorton, I wish you every happiness. Thank you. And I hope you can find it with Adeline. <laughs> of course, now that you're engaged to be married, I bet you'll never think of little old Leela again. Yes, I will. <laughs> I'm afraid I'll think of you, too, sometimes. Throckmorton. Yes, Lily? You're holding my hand. <laughs> I am? Well, still shaking it from the congratulations. <laughs> we can't carry on the way we used to. No, guess not. Remember that beautiful summer day we packed a lunch and went boating up at Grass Lake? Just the two of us. I was thinking about that last night. You had your arms around me, showing me how to row, and the boat got stuck on a sandbar. <laughs> yeah. And big old strong you carried me ashore because you didn't want me to get my bathing suit wet. <laughs> Yes? You're holding my hand again. Well, oh, sorry, Leela. I thought I was leading you back to the car. You weren't leading. You were squeezing. <laughs> sorry. You naughty boy. Oh, those were wonderful days, Leela. Mm-hmm. Every spring when my lilac bush bloomed, we fell in love all over again. <laughs> Head over heels. Head over heels. Leela, I'm all mixed up. Oh, you poor darling. Tell Leela all about it. Well, if you'd been here, I never would have gotten engaged to your cousin Adeline. Wouldn't you, honey? No, this never would have happened. Throckmorton, do you know what you're saying? What did I say? Well, but if I'd been here, you'd be engaged to me now. Well, if you'd said yes. Well, I'm here and I say yes. Huh? Now all you have to do is explain everything to Adeline. Explain what? That you and I are engaged. Yeah, I'm engaged to two women. <laughs> You were in quite a pickle there, Mr. Gildersleeve. It wasn't my fault, Petey. Those two girls were responsible. 
What did you ever do about that? Well, when a man's engaged to two girls, what should he do but back out on both of them? <laughs> I, I guess that little showgirl helped you to forget, didn't she, Mr. Gildersleeve? Katie Lee? Now there was a girl. As I recall, she hit town with her guitar on a rainy day. <laughs> yes, yeah, the Green Mountain Girl. I helped her over a water puddle into the theater, and she invited me backstage to dry my clothes. While your coat's drying, we can sit out here on the stage and talk. Fine. What do you do on the show, Miss Lee? Oh, I sing a couple of songs. But you tell me about yourself, Throckmorton. Are you married? No, I'm a bachelor. But I haven't given up the idea. You're not married? No, I'm a gypsy, I guess. Love gypsies. <laughs> I lead a roaming life, Throckmorton. Well... Summerfield might be a nice place to settle down. It might be. Well, let me sing you a song about a boy who met a girl in the wood. And this is just for you. For me? Mm hmm. Oh, when I was a young boy and drove my mother wild, I met a maiden in the wood and she said, child look deep into my green eyes and at my autumn hair when you're a man you'll never see a girl quite so fair remember me Swore when she vanished that when I was full grown, I'd have a girl just like her to be my very own. But now I am a man and I'd marry if I could. But I can't lose the memory of the girl. Hard to forget. Have another Coke, Mr. Gildersleeve. <laughs> I think I will. Darn women. Just when you get to liking them, they leave you. Yes, they've been running through your life like a greyhound buzz. <laughs> well, there was one I thought I could depend on. You don't change. Yep. My little nurse, Catherine Milford. But even she fooled me. I found out she was having dates with that young intern, Dr. Olson. I tried to put a stop to it, Petey. Naturally. I wanted to get ahead of that intern. So I wrote her a note offering to go steady with her. My, my. Well, Catherine's out of that intern tonight. I'll slip the note under her door. Look at that moon. Wish I had the date. Who's that stopping in front of the house? Oop, here they are. I better get out of here. <laughs> here they come. If I make a break for it now, they'll see me. I'll just drop off the edge of the porch. <laughs> Land in the lily pond. Both feet. Can't stay here. You'll hear that. I'm trapped. 
I just have to stand in it and hope they don't see me. <laughs> Being in the lily pond at midnight, it'd be hard to explain. <laughs> Lovely evening, Clara. Now, Catherine, don't try to say good night so fast. Well, I really should. I'd ask you in, but it's a little late. Had a girl, Catherine. My shoes are filling up. <laughs> well, is this the way you treat all your boyfriends? Send them right home? Now, Clarence. By the way, who's that funny looking fellow you've been going with? Oof. <laughs> <laughs> Miss Gildersleeve? He isn't so funny looking. He works for the water department. You bet. And I could turn off your water, Doc. <laughs> Wish I could drain this pond. <laughs> Why don't we sit here on the porch and swing a while? Go for it. Go home. It's a little cold for the porch swing, isn't it? Oh, not for a red-blooded couple like us. You'd better watch it. Well, we'll sit down for a minute. We don't want to catch the sniffles out here. Well, if you do, Dr. Olsen will take your case. Pushy Swede. <laughs> what would you prescribe, Doctor? Well, first I'd advise that you take preventive measures, my dear. Oh? The way to ward off a cold is to keep warm. Uh, let's sit a little closer together. Oh, now, Doctor. Oh, what a sneaky way to operate. <laughs> Nothing so romantic as an old porch swing if there's a boy and a girl in it. <laughs> That's what I was going to say. And just look at that big yellow harvest moon over there. Doesn't that suggest anything to you? Now he's using my moon. <laughs> well, it suggests I'd better be going in. Yeah, get up and go, Catherine. My feet are freezing. <laughs> oh, please, Catherine. Just five minutes more. Oh, my goodness. I just have to try to make myself comfortable. What's that? Fish in your pond? Oh, no. There hasn't been a fish in that pond since I've lived here. That's what she thinks. Phoebe, I had a cold for a week. Yeah, I remember. You bought a lot of remedies from me. That's the last woman who's going to make a fool out of me. <laughs> no, I mean it. No, I'm through. Never again. That's my one and only New Year's resolution. I'll never look at another woman. All right. Excuse me, Mr. Jolly, please. Phoebe's pharmacy. Yes, he's here. It's for you, Mr. Jolly, please. Me? Oh, well, thank you, people. Hello? Throckmorton, this is Grace. Grace? Oh, yes, Miss Tuttle. Yeah, I mean, Grace. I phoned your home, and Leroy thought you might be at Mr. Peavy. Yeah, here, here I am. Well, I feel terrible about this, but my date didn't get to town, so I wonder if you'd still care to take me out. Would I? Grace, I'll be right over. Bye! Why, what a New Year's. She wants me, Peavy. I'll see you later. <laughs> my, my. Peavy, don't look at me like that. This is different. <laughs> well, no, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> will be with us again in just 30 seconds. Resolve to give my family more appealing, more delicious meals than ever. Is that one of your resolutions this year? Then better make a resolution to always keep Miracle Whip salad dressing on hand, too. Miracle Whip does wonders for salads and sandwiches. Try it. See for yourself why Miracle Whip is America's favorite salad dressing. <laughs> at Kraft. Hope the new year will be full of good things for you. Let me say for them, Happy New Year, everybody. May 1953 bring good health and prosperity to you and peace.
Gildersleeve was presented tonight transcribed. Tonight, play You Bet Your Life on NBC. NBC.